This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another Atlas video. Okay, so apparently in my last crew video, I had some misinformation in it and I also have learned some more things that I want to fill you in on. But before we jump into the video, I just got something I want to tell you real quick and it's important, so please listen. I promise I'll make it as quick as possible. I'm human. I make mistakes. This isn't the first time I've made a mistake. It won't be the last time I make a mistake. What I do try to do is when those mistakes have been brought to my attention is make an update or corrections video as quickly as possible so that you know when you come to this channel, you're always getting the most accurate information I can provide to you. Also, you have to understand that I don't have 24 seven to devote to gaming. I know a lot of you think that that's all I do, but that's not the case. Also, I don't always make use of the mechanics that I teach you about. What I do in that situation is I spend a day or two in single player or on my test server learning everything I can about said mechanic. Because of that, I sometimes miss things. If I got a bunch of things wrong, I'll make a corrections video. If I just miss stuff, I'll make an update video. If it's not enough to make an actual video, I'll just pin a comment. But that is the way I work and that is the way this channel will continue to operate. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of things. Thank you for listening. All right, let's get to it. So we're going to start off with corrections. Well, this isn't really a correction, but it's another option that you have. I stated that you had to have them follow you and get close to the whatever you wanted them to mount or man or what have you. And then you could do it that way by holding down E and looking at them and telling them to get on whatever you want them to get onto. You can also hit comma and that will tell them to move to and use that item. So if we hit comma, you can see they all run over to it, but it's it's a little bit janky. Like, they don't want to get on that. They've gotten on it before. Let's try it again. Nope. Doesn't want to get on that. Let's try one of the cannons. Okay, we got one guy on the cannon. Let's try this one. Got the next one on the cannon. And the last one. So you can see that just, just a random one comes running to you and you don't really get the option to pick which one you want to do whatever you're trying to get them to do. In order to do that, you would have to go into their behaviors and have them, all of them, except for the one you want to get, you know, do whatever you'd have to have them ignore the group whistle. So if we do that and we tell him to unseat and now I whistle, he'll ignore the group whistle, but she'll come running and she'll get on it. So just an option. A lot of people were like talking like that was superior or something. But as far as I can tell, it's really not. It's just as janky as having them follow you close to you and going into the, the menu. But it is an option. So I wanted to make you all aware of it. OK, so this next one is a definite correction. I stated that you had to put the ammo on their person and you do not. You can actually have the ammo boxes in your base and around your base and they will draw the ammo directly from the ammo box and use it just like they do on a ship. I was also able to figure out how far away you could place those ammo boxes in each direction in order to make sure your base is covered, as well as I come up with an easy way to figure out how to find the range of the boxes for gold payment as well. So you can put these around in your base and put the gold in there, as I stated, and they will draw the gold from it as well as ammo for the ammo boxes. And that's 14 foundations. So what I did is I placed them down, as you see there, I placed one ammo in each of the boxes and one gold in each of the boxes. And then I just logged off for a while and this is where they stopped at. So you can see she hasn't drawn from there and there's still ammo left in here, but there is no ammo left here and there is no gold left here. So counted it up 14 foundations in every direction. It should be in every direction. I would imagine that it is a giant circle. So should be in pretty much every direction, 14 foundations away. So it's a pretty big area in which it will cover. All right, a lot of you ask questions about repairing your ship. So essentially what you need to do is you need to be anchored. You need to have the resources in your ship's inventory. So you got to have one of these uh, ship resource boxes and you got to have the repair resources needed inside of that box. They do not need a hammer on them. 
Uh, they will be doing this sweeping animation. So when they're doing this, you basically have to have them doing nothing. They just need to be standing on your deck doing nothing and they will start doing this sweep animation. And when they're doing that, that means they're doing the repairs. So as you can see here, all of my hull has been repaired. Now, from what I've noticed, they only repair the outer hull. These guys have been going for quite some time and you can still see that there is a lot of my deck that's all jacked up. My sails are still jacked up. All of this stuff over here, none of it. They haven't repaired any of it. But if I come over here and I fire off this cannon, so we're just gonna fire at the front of the ship here. It'll hit, now we're gonna fly over there real quick. And you can see that that's been damaged, but if we wait here a second, it should kick in and they should repair it. We should have all the resources. Okay, we do. So they should just auto repair that after we wait for a minute. Uh, sometimes when you get hit, they will stop sweeping. As you can see, they've stopped. So it may be a minute before they start sweeping again. So I had to mess with them a little bit, put them on the ship, get them back off the ship. But uh, as you can see, that just repaired. Uh, pretty much instantly as soon as they started sweeping. Let's jump down here and see if they repaired the bottom. And you can see the bottom has been repaired as well. So it's pretty quick once they start to actually sweep, they will start to run the repairs relatively fast. But as you notice, they've only repaired the outer hull, basically the planks of the ship. And all of this other stuff here is still damaged and they're not doing anything to repair it. So I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or if that's a bug or what. If they actually repair your deck or your sails or anything like that, let me know down in the comments. Another thing that was mentioned is some people were questioning whether or not N was actually melee combat. So essentially N just tells them to go into aggressive mode and attack anything. So if I hold down N now, now that horse I just spawned in and it's unclaimed. I'm gonna hit N and they should start attacking it. There we go. You can see the ones that were on the cannons actually unmount the cannons and go over and start attacking the horse. The other ones that were on the deck doing nothing, they're not. So it appears to be only the ones that you have mounted to stuff will unmount and start attacking uh, whatever is on your ship. The other thing to keep in mind is when you do that, it does actually change their behavior to aggressive. Another thing that I found out is that they actually cost more when they're manning things and depending on what they're manning depends on how much they cost. So as you see right now, this guy is going to want one gold every 1.2 hours. Now, if I tell him to unseat from that, he now wants one gold every two hours. So when you're docked, it's probably a good option just to unman all of your people from all of your cannons. So next up, you have to put two points into accommodations in order to make a difference on how often you have to pay them. And and it's it's how often you have to pay them not how much gold you pay them so it increases the hours in between how often they want gold they were at 1.7 when I originally did it and that when I put the two points in they want from 1.7 to 1.8 so right now they're at two so let's go ahead and we'll put two more points into it now if we go up here you can see he's at 2.1 so you get 0.1 of an hour for every two points you put into accommodations so i learned some more hotkeys that you can use for your ship so you can hit w to raise your anchor as you can see the anchor is being raised you can hit spacebar to drop your sails down to full you can hit z to cancel your sails basically raise them all the way go to zero and you can hit X to drop your anchor, which is great because when you're uh, coming in, you can co basically come into shore super hot if you want to, like max sails, all that good stuff. As soon as you see that anchor symbol over there on the right hand side, can you see it there? As soon as you see that little light anchor symbol, you can hit X to drop the anchor immediately and it will bring you to a halting stop. Next up, there is an autopilot. When they are on the steering wheel here, you can actually do autopilot so I'm going to just I'm gonna to attempt to whistle somebody over there 
So if I look at the ship now and I hold down E, you can see I have an autopilot option. So you have a bunch of different options here that you can do. So everything from follow the wind to your facing direction to global ship, uh, heading ship. So if we do global, you can see like it's just a basic direction there. We do it again, we got uh, headings, and if we hold down again, you got start ship forward. I like the direction, so like if I want them to just go that way, I can face that direction. I can look down and start face my direction. You can see now there's a yellow arrow there, and she's gonna auto, they back right up. Like look at that, she just backed up relatively fast, faster than what you can move when you try to back up the ship. And now we're just going, although she's gonna scrape this rock. She might be scraping that rock a little bit. So she'll just keep going and uh, they'll actually run ashore. So keep that in mind. And now we can change directions. So now if we come back down here and we do, where is it at? Heading ship, yeah. So now I can change that. So we're going this way. I can change it by 30 degrees. So there we go, she's gonna change 30 degrees and we'll probably wanna do a little bit more. So ship heading, uh, let's do 90 degrees. So we'll turn 90 degrees, which that's a pretty cool feature. And uh, you can also do this from the crow's nest. All right, so here I am up here in the crow's nest. So if I just look at the, uh, basically anywhere on the ship up here, you can see I can control the autopilot up here as well, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty handy feature, I like it. Now that I know that's a thing, I might actually use it. Maybe, probably not, I don't like messing with crew. Also note that once they are going and you're moving, you can change the throttle, so we can change set throttle to 50, 75, 25, zero if we want, or 100%. You get a lot of different options there. If you're interested in autopilot, I highly suggest uh, putting someone on the old steering wheel and giving it a go and checking it out. All right, that pretty much covers everything I missed and everything I wanted to correct. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I wanna give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.